Good morning, Peter. Morning, Haley and Coco. Sit down. Sorry for calling you in, calling you in girls, but I'm concerned about some serious problems in your writing. What's the problem? What isn't the problem? Your work is usually very good, but this time there are serious issues about the content and organization of your writing. But we have so many assignments, we don't know which to prioritize. Prioritize mine, of course. Anyway, Haley, you wrote about suicide cases at a company called Foxcorn. Let's read your essay. Now look at the introduction. What is the theme of your essay, Haley? Um, suicide at Foxconn. Right. And how did you want to argue your point? Um, I wanted to explain about the causes of suicide at Foxconn and give some solutions. Then you need to provide background related to the theme. Anyway, now we have the theme of your essay, that is, what you're going to talk about, and why you're going to talk about it, the background. We also have an overview how you're going to discuss the problem. These are the three parts you should include in your introduction. Hmm, I understand. I'll make more effort next time. Now let's look at the second paragraph. Haley, what's this supposed to be about? Um, the two major causes of suicide, the company and the suicidal person. In any case, you should only have one main idea per paragraph. Let's stay with company. How is the company a cause of suicide? The company focuses on profits only. What's wrong with that? Companies would go out of business if they didn't focus on profits. But Foxconn has harsh working conditions. Right, so that could be your point. You need to write a topic sentence that states that idea. One of the major causes of suicide at Foxconn is the harsh working conditions. Now, develop that idea. What are the harsh working conditions? What did you write? Hmm. The company focuses more on the profits than the welfare of the workers. Well, that doesn't describe the working conditions. It's just another empty statement. If the topic is harsh conditions, you need to explain what these are. We could say the company violates labor rights and does not respect the welfare of its workers. But you have to give evidence. Foxconn has restricted rules. What? Well, sometimes their workers have to work 12 hours a day. And they only have short breaks. I think you mean restrictive or even strict rules. Rules which inhibit workers. Any other evidence? Um, the workers have to sleep in dirty dormitories, I think. Right, so you're talking about conditions both inside and outside the workplace. Add that to your sentence both inside and outside is a good linking phrase. What would you write about first? The rules inside the workplace. Yes, and what could you write? Inside the workplace, the company has strict rules which confine the freedom of workers. Great, and how could you introduce an example of a strict rule? I know, by writing for example. Great, but how do these strict rules apply to cases of suicide. Many of my students say I'm a strict teacher, but none of them has committed suicide yet. But the rules are extreme and make the workers nervous. So maybe contrast uh, rules at Foxcorn with normal places of work. So use although? Yeah, go on. Although all companies have rules, Foxcorns are too extreme and make the workers nervous. It's the right idea, but again, too direct. Try to use some hedging. For example, most companies, or seem extreme, or could make. So you've given examples of inside the workplace. Now what? The example outside the workplace. Mm -hmm. Outside the workplace, workers 
sleep in dormitories that are cramped and dirty. That's great, but again, how does that relate to suicide? It means that the workers can't rest well. It affects their physical and mental health. Good. Make that into a sentence. Remember to use hedging. This means that the workers may not be able to rest well and that could affect their physical and mental health. Now you are showing your usual smartness, Haley. So now we need to start writing the first solution. Um, how? First, we need a link from the problems you have written about to the solutions. Um, but I wrote, after analysing the causes of this kind of phenomenon, the solutions seemed apparent. But that's not very clear, is it? What do you mean, this kind of phenomenon? And the solutions seem apparent. They're not apparent to me. You need a more effective link. You could begin with, in order to deal with these problems. And by the way, where do the solutions come from? Um, society and the government. Two sources. So you could link that with? The word both. Um, both society and the government. They could work together to improve conditions in the electronics industry. Is it good to have all the solutions in one paragraph? Well, we had a lot of ideas, so there could be two paragraphs. One about what society can do, and one about the government's role. But there's still something missing from this essay. A conclusion? Yes, let's look at how to write a conclusion, because Haley's essay doesn't have one. What phrases could you use to... In conclusion? To conclude? These phrases are overused. Can you think of another way to introduce a conclusion? Mm, provide a summary? Mm, that's great. Just restate the causes and solution. Your sentence can begin with, this essay has discussed the... Da, da, da. I see. Anything else? You could add a call to action or a prediction. Um, what do you mean? Well, add a sentence about what you think might happen if society and the government work together. Oh, like workplace conditions can be improved and work-related cases of suicide reduce. Bingo! There you are. Um, I have to go now, Peter. Thank you very much for your time and help. I revise my essay and give the second draft to you. Good, I look forward to that. Thank you for coming, Haley. Um, now, Coco, let's have a look at your essay. Please sit here.